Hi, my name is Richard Pennycook and welcome to Reshape Media. Today I'll be introducing to you our export toolkit for Adobe Photoshop along with a demonstration of how to use our toolkit and some of the export files that it will give you. So let's get started. Once you extract our toolkit, what you'll find is our Adobe Photoshop extension along with our license, some samples and examples to get you started. So the first thing you need to do is install the actual extension, so we can do this by double clicking the file. What it will do is bring up the Adobe Extension Manager. Now we just simply follow the installation process. You'll know it's successful when you see the enabled and you see a check mark, so we can just simply close the Extension Manager. The next thing we need to do is open up Adobe Photoshop. Once you have Photoshop open, you won't really see any changes, so we need to actually enable the panel. So we go to Extensions and the Photoshop Toolkit, and you'll see that it'll bring the panel up on the right-hand side, or depending on your layout itself. Our Export Toolkit for Adobe Photoshop will allow you to export your Photoshop files to Flash, Action Script and MXML full code along with HTML with HTML and CSS support. Now we also export the sprite sheets for XML and JSON as well as allow you to do smart guides. We also export icon sets and also do watermarking. So let's do a demonstration. Let's go back to our zip folder that we extracted if we go inside our examples what you'll see is an advanced and a basic example what we want to do is take a look at the basic now we can just simply load this by double clicking the menu PSD now with our plugin there's not much that you have to do you can simply click the button get up go have a coffee by the time you get back it'll be complete you have the choice once you basically choose exactly what you want to export of either exporting with images or without depending on what your purposes are for time's sake so we want to export with images considering this is our first export so let's go now once you begin you'll notice that it'll start to basically rename your layers for consistency it'll remove all the invalid characters depending on your export again html not all characters are valid the next step that it'll begin to do is it'll actually create a FTML folder just for consistency and for organization. If we go inside our FTML folder, what you'll start to see is your skins. Now your skins will be reflective of your actual Photoshop files, so the more Photoshop files you have, the more folders that you'll see. If we go inside our menu folder, what you'll notice it'll actually create a web-optimized PNG for each layer that there is. Now, depending on the complexity of your actual Photoshop file, this may take some time as it will actually render each individual layer. So the more optimized your Photoshop file is the faster that this process will be. So I'm just going to let this continue uh, just so we can see the time it will take to actually do the export. Now, when it is completed, it will create another folder depending on the project export again, in this case HTML5, which will contain all our code. Once this is exported, you'll notice that there are some inconsistencies as the Photoshop file we had visually will not match the complete rendered output. You'll see the difference between the original render and the final output with the changes that were made. So once this is complete, we can take a look. Now when the actual script completes, what it'll show you, it will give you a prompt to let you know that it is finished. You'll see it here. And we can actually just go and check our HTML folder. So, you'll notice that our HTML5 folder has been created. What it will do for HTML's sake, it will actually create the CSS and the HTML file just to keep it organized. So if we take a look at our CSS file, you'll see from the very beginning it's very organized and very structured. This is something that we can give to a developer right away and they can start working on it. You won't hear any complaints that they can't use it, they can't read it. They'll be able to start working with it as soon as you give it to them right as it exports. Next step, let's take a look at the HTML export. So again, you'll see very structured, very organized. This is something that a developer can use right away. They can reference the layers that they need to in an instant. Now, if you have your own personal JavaScript libraries per se, or even Flash libraries, depending on your export again, what you can do, as long as you keep your names consistent in your Photoshop file, you can spit out applications on the fly as they will automatically integrate with your framework. Now if we actually look at the HTML export, you'll see off the bat that the final 
it actually matches the graphic that we have in our Photoshop file but our original doesn't so let's take a look at why you'll see again this is our actual Photoshop graphic versus our rendered output in HTML now you can quickly do a select all and you'll see that this is true HTML again if we look at the source code you can see again full HTML so let's take a look at some of the reasons as to why the original was rendered this way going back to Photoshop we can see that visually by all accounts our PSD looks accurate but if we take a deeper look into the actual objects that were created we can see beside the original and the final there are steps to actually correct this discrepancy as you can call it between the original and the final so if we look at the steps to correct, the very first step is you actually have to convert your layers to unique names. This is a common problem with a lot of Photoshop designs. Now the output that this gives you, for instance, if we take a look at this element, the folder itself is called Menu, while the other folder is also called Menu. So you can see. The problem is now when this is rendered, it will actually create an object in HTML, but it won't know what properties to reference this to. Now if you're exporting to FTML, this will not be a problem as it will maintain the object structure per object. Another common issue is the fact that you have to actually convert your objects to individual objects. Now from a design perspective, although you actually want four buttons, design-wise you could simply create an individual text box, which is what was done here and simply add your text into the actual layers. Now visually this will you know, be accurate and actually come out the way you want it to look. The problem is when this is actually exported now to code it will do exactly what you did which is create a single text box and you will end up having this effect. A single text box with text which is exactly what you wrote. The simple way to fix this is to actually create an individual text object. Once this is done, what this will do is actually export each individual text object. So from a developer's perspective, if there are four buttons that you wish to use, now they have four buttons, rather than a single text box to use. So you'll see, these two common problems, basically, as long as you follow these steps, you'll be able to fix 99% of the Photoshop designs that you have and export them exactly the way that you want them to look.